I have a lot of videos on the channel about the AC-15, the AC-30, uh, various models and series from the 60s to today. And people keep asking, what about the AC-10 custom, the AC-10C1? And I've always said, I don't have an opinion on that because I've not had one come into my bench. After I work on one, I will have an opinion. Well, one just came in, so let's form an opinion about it. I think there's a conspiracy among amp manufacturers. As the price of an amp goes down, the number of screws goes up, which brings the repair cost up. I don't quite get it myself, but maybe there's some good to having a almost entirely closed back cab for this. Let me remove all these screws. If you do this to one of your own, take a note of which screws go where. Some of these will be machine screws. Some of these will be wood screws. They are not interchangeable. If you try to make them interchangeable, bad things happen. So all the pointy ones will be wood screws. All the ones with uh, square ends will be machine screws. Put them in different little bowls or cups or whatever on the table as you work. Make a note to yourself which goes where. All right, there's probably an even better way to do that. I'm gonna get some of the cobwebs out. Later, I'll make sure that all the hardware in here is tight. Custom Celestion 10 inch speaker, the VX10. I bet that's pretty damn cheap. We'll see how it sounds in a little while. One view of everything. It's been very dusty. Try to get some of the worst of that off. Dust gets into all kinds of stuff. It is not your tonal friend. Cheap Chinese generic tubes, about what you'd expect at the price point. Let me go through and do an up close look and sniff things. And I'll report back if I see any particularly good or particularly bad things. Well, as far as construction and components go, this, this thing has nothing in common with AC-15 and AC-30 custom series very different on every level it's really well built for a guitar pedal and it has tubes in it let's see if uh, it has any major flaws as a result it's got these little quarter watt resistors there let me get you to see it these little quarter watt resistors are the screen grid resistors for a pair of eo84s and they're supposed to be 470 ohms and on all the ones i do i use a two watt these are Half watt at best, but they look like quarter watt. And look here. This one, unsurprisingly, is dark. What it's supposed to look like, what it looks like. That's way too much heat for a resistor of that wattage. So those are going to get replaced. I'm going to turn the amp on first just to hear it and see if that's the cause of the sound problems. They said distorted on low frequencies. If this output tube is not working properly because that screen grid resistor is not working properly. That would give a low output, very distorted, particularly on the low end. For those who've questioned over the years why I don't use amp cradles, I've been doing this for 30 years, and I thought there was a real advantage to an amp cradle, I'd use one. I find that books and boxes let me make very good stacks as needed, to our, sometimes to accommodate odd sized chassis and odd transformer placements. If I was building a whole bunch of the same amp using the exact same chassis, sure, a cradle could be nice. Playing one for the first time. All right, I'm going to save my opinions 
for when I can do the real playing test and this thing's working 100%, we'll do the, the mic thing so you're hearing what I'm hearing as opposed to me hearing it in the room and you're just hearing what the lav mic picks up from, oh, eight or nine feet away, pointing in a different direction. I'm not hearing this problem that the owner is reporting yet, but two things. I don't have it in the, in the combo, so the speaker is not right here vibrating things. And uh, it's only been on a short while. The heat that builds up in this resistor that's caused that heat damage that's visible uh, has not had time to really build up yet. Microphonic output tubes don't help, especially in a combo. That could also be part of it. I'll power it off. I'm going to let those uh, tubes cool down. I'm going to pull these tubes. I'm going to change those two resistors, at which point I will put those tubes back in place. If uh, I don't like the way they sound, I think this amp is just worth getting a, a pair of better EL84s for. I'll talk to the owner about that. There might be a cost he or she wants to de defer for a month or two once the, the uh, tube availability and prices have come back towards uh, whatever the new normal is going to be. It's a short-term uh, shortage and uh, new tubes are arriving all the time, but due to supply and demand, the costs are still artificially a bit high. It will get better, but we're not there yet. I'll let you watch if you promise not to talk too much and interrupt me. I'm going to put the new ones in up here because this is up. And does heat sink or does heat, you know, I went to six, I took sixth grade. I even passed on the second try. Get this to line up a little bit better. So getting this a little bit farther away from the tube itself will be good. And getting that air gap between the resistor and the board will be good. And everything will run cooler. And these two watt 1Ks should never really fail in this amp unless there's something really catastrophic, in which case one would hope that the fuse would blow instead. All right, now the next thing to do after I put these tubes back in place is I'm gonna measure the uh, cathode bias resistor in this amp which is a 120 ohm according to what's printed on it. But to do the bias calculations, I need to know what it actually really is. Is it a 118? Is it a 123? Et cetera, et cetera. And uh, then there's also, did they use 120 ohms because that's what this amp needs to be biased properly for EL84s? Or did they use 120 ohms because that's what Vox did um, in 1959 in the uh, true AC15? We'll find out in just a moment. Well, the cathode resistor measures 122.2 with 119 volts coming out of the wall. It's 10.8 uh, volts across the cathode. Uh, the uh, plate cathode voltage was 292 volts. And once I subtract the uh, screen current from that, it leaves us with 12.26 watts per EL84, which is actually pretty damn great. Kind of glad to see that they got it right on two fronts. Number one, it's not over biased like a lot of EL84 amps. It's biased exactly right in a cathode biased EL84 amp like a Vox, which should be between 100 and 120 percent dissipation. And the uh, plate to cathode voltage is not over 350. It's well below that, so that's good. It's where it ought to be in a small Vox. Um, as far as the sound goes, it's a very different circuit than the. Uh, actual AC-10. I've 
not pulled up the schematic. It's got an F and FET, which is fine for uh, to make a gain stage. And it's got a little digital reverb. Let's see how it sounds. <laughs> That's actually not a bad sound. You know, very microphonic output tube, as I mentioned. I'll call the owner in a little bit. And uh, we'll check. So let me tell you my impression so far of this. Granted, we'll have to do the final sound test uh, with the real mic, and we'll compare the little uh, cheap Celestion 10 versus my shop cab, which has good speakers. It may be that the uh, speaker in the, in the combo sounds okay. It may be that it's doing the app no favors. What I'm hearing from the app so far is a very good sound, uh, at least as far as the cleans go. I've not pushed it yet. Um, it's a little bit hissy, and that may be the lack of shielding, um, though that's as much shielding as this, this amp gets. It may just be uh, the preamp tubes. I've not tried swapping them out yet. Let's see if that hisses in the reverb. No, it's just present in the amp. It's in the preamp though, so it may be that V1 tube. Um, it's a Sorry for hitting the camera. It's a pretty good sounding little amp. I need to look up the price point. I know it's not expensive. Uh, my concern for this would just be when it does need service. Let me show you some stuff. Okay. This board was made to be very inexpensive to make. It has a combination of through hole and surface mount components. And that makes it very inexpensive to build but it is not designed to be field serviceable. While this amp is under warranty, if there's a problem, they just swap out the entire board. That's how cheap it is. The issue is once it's out of warranty, and say some stuff, the through hole stuff down there goes bad. Let's say that you have a problem with C30 there between these two large capacitors. Now I can easily work on through hole components and I can easily work on surface mount stuff, but the combination of them can be very difficult. Imagine that you are a giant, and C30 is a taxi cab on a Manhattan street, and you want to reach down and pick up C30. You can't because these damn skyscrapers block your way. So it can be very difficult to do component level repair on these when it's surface mount, if, it, if there's an adjacent through hole component, which is large and physically blocking access. Does that make it impossible? No. Does that bring the repair cost way up? Yes. So this amp sounds pretty good. It's not particularly well built. It is built for the short term. It has some mistakes that we know about. What other mistakes will make themselves known through in time? I cannot say at this point. I will say that this amp sells new for $580. I'm sure that you can get them used for around three, four, probably closer to three. But when it needs service, that service could be two to three hundred dollars. It could be more than that, given the difficulty of replacing certain parts on this. The uh, AC15 is not much bigger. It's not much heavier. It's not much louder. Doesn't cost much more. If you get it used, you can get it a used AC15 in great shape for the same price as a new one of these. And it is a more versatile amp. It is a better built amp. It is a much easier amp to service and an amp that is going to be less in need of service, predictably. So this amp does not really make sense to me at the new price point, $580. If this were being made for $300, that's pretty impressive. But uh, it is built as the disposable amp, but it is not priced accordingly, in my opinion. So as gorgeous as it looks from the outside on the front. I mean, it is a truly beautiful amplifier. You saw the picture at the beginning. It is making promises, at least as far as the reliability goes, that it cannot keep. But 
in fairness, let me put it back together in its cab, and we'll listen to it through its speaker and through mine, and we'll see what the amp actually sounds like. Maybe it sounds good enough that for, for your needs, it does the bill, and if in three years it needs to be replaced, hey, you got three years out of it. That's your call, not mine. And some repairs, say if those two diodes went out, that'd be inexpensive. This was simple. But there are things in this which, when they do fail, can really be prohibitive to repair, just in terms of the labor and time involved. Okay, let's see what this sounds like. I've got treble and bass at noon, volume at nine o'clock, master on 10, reverb off. I've got a 57 just off the junction of the desk cap and the cone on this little Celestian. I've got my mic pre set from yesterday when I did the Princeton, which should be in the ballpark. I'll adjust a little bit as necessary. Let's see what the general sound is. Listen to the background there. Hear that little rattly? That's, that's a tube, probably one of the preamp tubes. I changed the output tubes for some new sob techs. But I think we've got a microphonic preamp tube, so I'm not done with this, but let's listen to the speaker. Make a mistake, play it again. That's what Miles Davis said, and that's why I sound like Miles Davis. Well, it sounds like an app. See what it sounds like when turned up. So that was at nine o'clock on the volume. Let's go up to about eleven o'clock on the volume. There's a nastiness there. sure if that's the speaker or the amp. Let's turn it up to about two o'clock when we look at my mic pre. <laughs> Definite nastiness there. Let me switch to the other speaker and see if the problem goes away or if it changes or whatever. All right, haven't touched the amp settings. So let's go through this ET65. but there's a, a hard blattiness that I'm not digging on this. I don't know if it's the FET in the preamp on this thing that's not doing nice on that or something else in the circuit. Let's go back to the cleans and see how it the cleans translate with the different speaker. All right, that's a nice sound. So I've got the bass at like one o'clock and the treble at noon. Let me turn the treble up just a little bit. some reverb. A little bit more. A 
Let's go back to the stock speaker with that sound. Quite aside from that microphonic tube that I'm hearing in there, this speaker sucks. You just, you know, the output of the amp sounds good for cleans. Uh, this speaker just takes away, you know, it leaves it one and a half D. It just takes away all, everything below about 400 Hertz and doesn't have a lot of definition sparkle up top. So you're left with just mid range, but not in an interesting way. Um, I'm not trying to be mean, it's just not a very good sounding speaker. And uh, the amp sounds good clean, but it falls apart as soon as it's pushed. So it behaves like a solid state amp, even though it's not a solid state amp. Um, if you just need a little lightweight carry thing that, you know, uh, only does cleans, this might be your ticket and it is beautiful. It would sound a lot better with a better speaker but how much money do you want to throw at one of these things? You know, so I've already opened it up, replaced the two screen grid resistors, replaced the output tubes, and now most likely needs at least one preamp tube as well to get rid of that low end. Turn the reverb off so you can hear it better. It's just a, a, a little rattly thing there. So that's not good in a combo. Um, Got to say, I'm not loving it. It does that one clean pretty well. The speaker is interfering with its ability to do that one clean really well. It's prone to microphonics because the tubes are right there jammed up against the speaker. I'm not sure if uh, how many choices and speakers you will have because the depth is not very great and those tubes are already close to the back of the stock speaker. Some better sounding speakers with larger magnets you may not be able to fit in here. Given the price of this versus the price of a used AC-15 or save up a little bit more, get the new AC-15, the AC-15 kills this. The only way this competes is that it's very pretty um, looking. It's not beautiful sounding with this stock speaker. And while that clean sound it does is quite nice, it is not a what I would consider to be a particularly voxy sound. It is not a voxy lady. Um, I would say both the Princeton Reverb and the AC-15 are better choices than this. Um, there are other uh, amps in this in similar price ranges. I, I just don't see a need for this to exist. It's a shame because it is beautiful. And that's, that's the nicest thing I can say about this. It is truly a lovely looking thing. 